Deuteronomy 24.4a. Lo yuchal ba'la harishon asher shilecha lashuv lekachata lichyot lo leisha achare asher hutamata. Verse 4 begins to, to round out this section in Deuteronomy on this divorce law, and it does not let up on complications. <laughs> so let's look at a couple of these things. I want to pay particular attention to this word here. So let's get there quickly. Uh, we've got the negation here. Uh, he is not able. Here is the call imperfect third masculine singular of the verbal root yachal. Now, normally this Shurik does not drop in there, but it does with yachal. That's pretty normal. So yuchal. He is not able. Who is the he? This is the first husband. Her first husband. Third feminine singular pronominal suffix. So her first husband is not able. And this first husband is the one who he sent her, third feminine singular suffix, away. This is a PL, perfect third masculine singular of the verbal root shalach plus that third feminine singular suffix. So her first husband, who sent her away, he is not able to return, call infinitive construct plus the lamed of the verbal root shuv. He is not able to return to take her. Here we have a call infinitive construct of the verbal root lakach. Now let me point out here, this lamed is not this lamed. The lamed of the root has gone because of the uh, infinitive construct in the call, and this is the lamed preposition, to take her third feminine singular pronominal suffix. So that first husband is not able to return to take her to exist, call infinitive construct of the verbal root haya plus that lamed prefix, not able to return to uh, to take her to exist for him as a wife. So this is a convoluted way to basically say that first husband cannot remarry her. And then we get to this part, after which, or after that, this is kind of a, a nominalizing asher is the way uh, I believe Homestead puts it, after which being the, the condition or the situation. And then this is the third feminine singular verb. And the parsing can be a little bit tricky, Hot pa'al is one option. Another one that uh, John Walton proposes is a hut katel. Hut katel. These are just different ways of trying to talk about the same form here. If we go with this one and follow John Walton in a 1991 article in Hebrew Studies, he argues that this means something like after she has been made to declare herself to be unclean. And so this is not that she has defiled herself or she has been defiled in this second marriage, but, it, it, but rather she has been forced to declare herself unclean. And I think that fits a little bit better with this context as it relates to the indecency that was found in her, this physical defect that neither of these men prefer.